leave the dog alone. I'm going to send you to jail, Taylor Adams. Like, I just need some accountability. So through the screen, I need you to actually yell at me and punch me in the face. If I look at my phone, straight to jail. At warming her cold ass feet at night and not complaining. That's how you know he was written by a woman. Can you just like treat me like this baby cow? Like that's just what I want in life is to be treated like a baby cow by Wes Ryder. Hello besties, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori if you're new. I hope that you're having the most amazing day of your entire stinking life. We are trying to get out of burnout slash a reading slump this week. We're keeping it a very smooth brained reading week and we're also just going to put this out into the universe that any reading is good reading this week. <laughs> we're not trying to finish like 18 books this week. I'm currently in the middle of an audiobook, which is a thriller slash horror because it's very spooky. Not spooky, but like very creepy. It's called The Last Word by Taylor Adams. 54% in, so we're going to be hopefully finishing that up very soon. This thriller is about our main character, our main girly pop. She reads an indie author on her Kindle, gives it a one star review. She gets into a comment battle with the author, the author saying, take down this one star review. You're literally the rudest person in the whole wide world. And she's like, no, like you published a book. You should be open to both bad and good reviews, like honest reviews of your book. And then this author tries to murder her when she's house sitting on this house by the beach that's really isolated. So safe to say it's very scary. It's It starts to get scary from literally the first chapter and it's honestly exactly what I needed. I will preface that with this book does have like animal horror, animal abuse. It's quite intense and it's how the book starts off. I have heard that the puppy dog is fine. Sorry for spoiling that, but I felt like I needed to know that when it started to get very, very intense. And I was like, I don't want to read this about this puppy dog. Very much enjoying it. The other books that I have for this week are very different from a thriller. We are going to be diving headfirst into cowboy romance because I feel like if anything can pull me out of this burnout slump, it's going to be Flawless by Elsie Silver. So many of y'all have recommended for me to read this book and I'm just now getting around to it and I'm so excited. Not just this book, but like this whole series. So Flawless by Elsie Silver. And then the other book that I have on my Kindle is Swift and Saddled. And I'm so excited because I loved Done and Dusted so stinking much. That is the TBR this week. We are being gentle with our reading. If you're also going through burnout slash a slump, be gentle with yourself, give yourself some grace. It is currently Monday. I am working, so I think for today, the reading that we will continue to get done is going to be our audiobook. Okay, super quick, because like I said, I'm already a little over halfway through the last word thought so far. I love the way it's written. I love that it's dual POV, so you get not only our main character, like Girly Pop, but you also get the perspective of the killer. So it switches back and forth. It keeps it... Thrillers are already fast-paced, but this one is, like, gripping me. Taylor Adams knew what they were doing with this book because this killer is gross. Like, it just gives you the chills. He wears a fedora. He's this, like, creepy stalker. The books that he has written, so he's written like a bunch of murder mystery books that are all garbage, 16 of them, I think. And we're learning that in all of these books that are murder mysteries, he actually killed these people in this way and was like telling his stories of how he killed these people. He vapes, like vapes period, which is gross. But to make that even worse, as if that isn't bad enough already, he vapes like butter flavored vape. <laughs> Those are my thoughts so far. I will continue to check in as I go. I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish this today. I'm listening to this on two times speed, which like normally I never do. My comfort speed is like 1.75. So I only have a little over two hours left in this audiobook. I forgot to mention also this killer walks around with a katana to kill his victims. And she, there's just a scene where he's like standing behind her in a room and she doesn't know about him being there. And then she smells Mountain Dew body odor and butter like vape smell. 
Happy Tuesday. I am 4% away from being done with the last word and I know that I'm being annoying, but I have to pause listening to it right now. It is my lunch break. It's two minutes past my lunch break. I am running to Sephora for a really fun reason actually. So I was gonna bring y'all along. Um, this weekend is my bachelorette weekend which I'm so excited. I'm going with my besties to New Orleans and they've already told me, like my maid of honor told me not to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyways because I'm a Taurus and gift giving is my love language. So I'm gonna go make some like cute little gift bags from Sephora for my literal best friends in the whole wide world. And I'm, I'm gonna get to hang out for a whole weekend with them. Long distance friendships are so annoying. Like one of my friends lives in California. I'm now in Arizona. And then the other two of my besties live in Massachusetts. And it's so sad because I never get to see them for an extended period of time except for this weekend. Oh my gosh, I could literally cry just talking about it. So we're gonna go to Sephora. We're gonna pick out just like cute little things to put in their gift bags. Um, and so that's why I have to pause this book here, but I will say this book is much more gruesome than any other thriller that I've read, at least in recency that I can think of. It has the suspense of a thriller, but it has the gore and the like gruesomeness of a horror. So overall it has been heart racing to listen to. Um, there have been moments where it really makes me scared. I think I already talked about our little puppy dog. Her name is Laika and she's so sweet and she's like such a target in this book. <laughs> it's like leave the dog alone. I'm going to send you to jail, Taylor Adams. Like, what are you doing? Um, but it's been really fun. So let's go do that because I want to make sure that I come back with enough time. This was crazy, <laughs> like such a crazy plot twisty thriller. There were like some things that I did anticipate. So not all of them caught me like super out of the blue, but there were so many plot twists, regardless of who you are. I don't think you would be able to catch all of the twists. I'm trying to decide what I want to rate that because like it was very entertaining. I did really like it. But for whatever reason, I like want to give it a three star, like a 3.5, which is like good. Like good, not great, but like really good. So tentative three star. I think I need to sit on that a little bit because sometimes I feel like a three star seems like a bad thing. And that book was so fun and it was not bad at all. It was exactly what I needed. Now I don't have an audiobook for either Swift and Saddled. I think I'm still waiting for it on my Libby or Flawless by Elsie Silver, but I don't know. I think I'm kind of in the mood to read physically because it's been a while. I've been doing a lot of reading on my Kindle, but like I mentioned, maybe possibly, since we're getting out of like burnout, I have found it very difficult to read with my eyeballs. Like audiobooks have been my absolute savior and a lot of the books that I've been reading, even towards the end of like Realmathon, I was immersive reading. So I am a little bit nervy nerve that I can't immersive read either of these books. But when I look at these like chapters, they're really, really quick and the font is really big. And immediately flipping through, I just saw like your dick I feel like this is gonna go by really fast. So I think we'll go with Flawless. Uh, 
update on Flawless and I have a very exciting package that I can't stick and wait to open. So we're gonna open this package first. I think I've talked a little bit recently about how obsessed I am with F1 racing. I literally watched Chicken Shop Date with Amelia and Lando Norris and he skyrocketed to be the cutest person in the whole entire world for me. And I'm obsessed with him. So I am not only watching Drive to Survive, but I got like the F1 app on my iPad to be able to watch the races. Thank you, Rachel from Raven Haired Reader for letting me know how she watches them because it's going to be my life now. And if you're wondering why I'm going on a ri random tangent about F1 racing, you're about to see. Eee, it's so cute. I'm obsessed. I'm literally obsessed. This is my Lando shirt. Oh my gosh, I'm so freaking obsessed with this. In the back. Oh my gosh, I love him. McLaren haul for my baby boy. And then flawless. So I am 100 pages in. I'm really liking it. It's very easy to read. I think that the dialogue is really fun. Let me quickly give a synopsis, even though I feel like everyone in the whole entire world knows what this book is about. So we have a cowboy whose name is Rhett Eaton. He professionally bull rides and he is like a good person, but he kind of has this bad boy air about him. He sleeps with a lot of girls. Like he is just, he's a bull rider and a partier and a lover of women, if you will. He gets into some trouble because he has a milk sponsorship and then they catch him on camera being like, I absolutely hate drinking milk and it becomes like a big deal and he's gonna lose a bunch of sponsorships and all of these things. And so then we have our girly pop. Her name is Summer. She's part of his PR team. Like she works for her dad at the PR team. He's like a talent agent. And he decides you're going to be his babysitter for the next eight weeks until the bull riding season is over and just make sure that he stays in line and doesn't get into more trouble. So she has to like live with him and like be around him 24 7 to make sure that he's not getting into additional trouble so we start off and she is going to like his ranch and she meets his whole family and it's a really cute dynamic his dad i don't know the other books in the series like he has brothers and so i'm assuming that the other books in the series follow his brothers but if his dad has a book i'm gonna be so excited he's such a dilf Anyways, not me just exposing myself. So it's been fun so far. Like I said, the dialogue is really fun. I'm surprised at how like modern it is. Like she gets out of the car on his ranch and she's like, I probably shouldn't have worn this outfit, but it's a sleigh. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know why. I just like wasn't expecting it to be that like slangy and like fun. I'm not sure how I feel about the romance quite yet because it felt like he really disliked her one second. And then immediately like the first bar scene that they go to all together with like his brothers, to like welcome them both home, whatever. It felt like immediately he started to get, not in love with her, but horny for her, for lack of a better word. Like he just immediately was like, oh my gosh, I can't stop thinking about her lips. Like this cherry in this drink is making me think about her lips. And I was like, this was a very crazy shift from him being like annoyed that he has a full-time babysitter to Oh my gosh, I can't stop thinking about her mouth. I will continue on with this. I'm hoping to get at least another 100 pages today and I will check in when I read more. Did I mean to actually read and check in yesterday? Absolutely I did. Did I do that? No, as you can tell. So <laughs> I did read just a little bit more of Flawless today. This morning I went to go get my nails done, which they very much needed and I'm obsessed with them. Hee <laughs> hee. Lunch break today, I went to go read by the pool. So I read only another 50 pages. I'm on page 152, but I am liking this a lot more than my first check-in. I knew it was going to hit different once the romance actually started because I didn't get to that point with my last check-in. And now that the romance has started, I'm really enjoying it a lot more. I think I'm liking Rhett more as a character. We've gotten little bits and pieces of Summer's backstory as well, and she has like a couple things in her past that have just made her like a really interesting character. The tension is palpable through the page. 
there is a one bed trope in this and I was screaming. I'm currently still in the middle of the one bed trope. We're getting to like the next morning after and I'm so excited to read more but I had to stop to come back from the pool. I will check in once I read more. And then tomorrow morning, early, like before the sun rises, I have to go to the airport to go on my bachelorette weekend. So, I'm not planning on vlogging. However, I might just do like a final check-in in case I read any more of this. I don't really wanna take this to the airport because I was just gonna bring my Kindle on the trip with me and I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to read besides on the airplanes. Okay, I'll try to do another check-in for this later today. People, like so many people when I said that I wanted to read Cowboy Romance recommended this book to me no one said that there was a one horse trope in it and I'm mad at you for that I'm just kidding I'm not mad but I would have read it a lot faster if you had told me that I've only read another 50 pages I'm on page 204 but I have to do another update because I'm absolutely screaming and I feel like so much has happened like the middle of this book I feel like there's a lot going on we've already screamed about the one horse trope I absolutely can't stand how much I love that so stinking much. I was not expecting it for whatever reason in this book, maybe because he's like a bull rider. I wasn't expecting any like horses to come about, but he lives on a ranch, so there's that. I love that he fell first and like, because it's dual POV, we're getting his chapters where he's just like starting to get obsessed with her. Love it so much. Also love that she's really trying hard to fight her feelings to be very professional. Like I feel like it took her a longer period of time to come to terms that she's like attracted to him. And now like not only that, he's being so sweet to her and like gentlemanly, what a sweet little cowboy man. Actually not little, what a massively huge sweetheart cowboy man. There we go. I really liked that because I feel like if they both just fell and fell right away, it wouldn't have been as believable to me, but because she's like starting her career, she's doing her job, this is so unprofessional of me. If I end up like kissing him or if I end up like hooking up with him, I don't want it to reflect poorly on my professional career because like she wants to be a talent agent for athletes and she doesn't want to have a reputation of hooking up with them, which makes a lot of sense. And so everything that's happening now I love the tension so much. <laughs> I am definitely liking Rhett a lot more. I think the first 100 pages he read very young, but now that we're getting more insight into him, I also think he's not acting as young. And he did address it too and said that his family and a lot of his fans like see him as one particular thing. And so like that's how he acts. His family sees him as like this little boy who is irresponsible. He's continuing to prioritize his bull riding career and they want him to retire and like work on the ranch and stuff like that. So he kind of plays into that and that makes a lot more sense because at first I was like, why is he acting like this when he is in his 30s? He has now started to act his age a little bit more. But also, why am I so obsessed with the dads in this book? Like I already talked about Rhett's dad, but I'm also like really obsessed with Summer's dad because he's just like really funny and snarky. And he has a lot of like drama in his past and I'm like, okay, Elsie Silver, you can, you can write dad's bestie. Okay. Sorry, we're trying to record her. She She's going to be here soon. Why are you trying to down and do a chatty let's get ready together and catch up because we are back in Arizona bachelorette weekend was 
everything and more. Um, I was going to sit down and do a chatty get ready with me catch up on everything, but I am getting a facial this morning. So I can't put any makeup on. <laughs> do that this morning. And then the other thing we're doing today is getting my hair redone because I got it done also a couple weeks ago and it came out much, much blonder than what I was expecting. <laughs> Um, like a lot blonder. So we're gonna tone it down. I want it to be much closer to my root color and I also like really hate these really, really blonde front pieces. I wanted to continue the vlog though because I haven't finished Flawless quite yet. I'm very close. I only have like a little over 100 pages left. So I think our goal today will be to finish Flawless and then I also want to start reading Swift and Saddled. I think I probably could finish it this weekend. I don't know how much I will show of like a parent spa day that I'm having, but I will take you along for a little bit of it. And I just wanted to provide some context. I hopefully provided some clips of like Bachelorette. I don't, I didn't vlog and I didn't take a ton of like videos. Those videos were for my friends when they had set up the room, the hotel room for us. And it's so stinking cute. Seriously debating going to read by the pool because it's so hot today that I'm like do I want to be laying in my house on the couch which would be comfort level 10,000 but also like do I want to go lay by the pool and read my book I don't know I have an ambient room going I'm about to read more of flawless hold me to this today we're finishing this book like it's not gonna take me a long time it's just been so difficult to actually sit down and like force myself to read and then also i find that when i'm reading i'm constantly just thinking about other things and then i have to reread the same sentence like eight million times so it's clearly a me problem and i'm like really enjoying the books that i'm reading i just need some accountability so through the screen i need you to actually yell at me and punch me in the face if i look at my phone straight to jail okay i'm glad that we're all on the same page also my hair came out so good it's definitely darker than what it was it's exactly what i wanted it looks absolutely scrumptively umptious i'm obsessed with it so we had our beauty morning now it's reading afternoon If summer's jealousy were water, I'd want to bathe in it. I'm dead. Guess who finished her book? We said we we're gonna read today and we read. Wild concept for me lately. Um, I really enjoyed this. I was hovering between a four star and like a 3.5 star the only reason being the beginning was quite mid for me like the first 100 pages i was very unsure the rest got so much stronger but like when i compared this love story and how gagged i was to other books i was like it's definitely 3.5 i enjoyed this so stinking much i love these characters so stinking much the spice was spicing hard this man is sexual the things that i really loved about this book and this is just it speaks to elsie silver's writing i loved that she made summer so endearing by little things that if you're a girl like you just do like rhett warming her cold ass feet at night and not complaining that's how you know he was written by a woman but also like it just makes summer so endearing that she was like freezing cold in some of these scenes and she doesn't want to like complain about it and have it like be a whole thing and then he's just like just let me warm your feet i also really liked how at the beginning of every chapter there were like text messages i don't know why i 
I really enjoy a mixed media story and one of the things that I love about Magnolia Park so much is all like the text messages in those but I really liked that the text messages weren't only between Rhett and Summer it was also between them and like her dad I really liked the dynamic of the parents and the families in this book because even though absolutely Summer and Rhett are the main characters they felt like so much more than just side characters. Like Elsie Silver really did a great job setting a foundation of strong characters. I also really, really love Willa. Like I hope that Willa gets a love story because I love her. And I'm also very excited for Cade's book. And I feel like lately, especially within the last week, I have seen so many posts about Cade Eaton and I'm like, I can't wait to get to his book. I'm going to start Swift and Saddled, I think. We're gonna start that tomorrow, and it's a fairly short book, so we will see how far we get. But tonight, because I accomplished my goal, I'm going to take a little bit of a reading break and just like watch Twitch streamers and vibe. Hello friends. The reading gods have blessed me today because my audiobook hold on Libby came in for Swift and Saddled, and I had a lot of laundry and cleaning and like some cooking. I also went food shopping today. I have listened to a little bit of Swift and Saddled. I'm now at 24% chapter 10. I'm obsessed with them. I was obsessed from not even joking chapter two. I was screaming. I immediately went on Goodreads and like updated my reading percentage to 5% and I was like immediately yes. The kiss that they shared is going to forever live rent free inside of my brain. I'm so happy to be here. I feel like, and this is very first impressions because I've only read one book from Elsie Silver, but I do feel like Lila Sage's writing captures me right away. Done and Dusted captured me literally in two seconds and I was like, oh my gosh, I need more of this in my life, like absolutely immediately. Swift and Saddled, same thing. Flawless, it took a little bit more time for me to really get into it so Lila Sage is my person clearly I'm so excited to continue listening to more of this but I just needed to give like first impressions of that first quarter of the book because I don't want to stop listening to this I really love how Wes has the mental health representation I also am obsessed with how much he's questioning he's like I've literally never cared for girls before like they haven't they haven't taken over my mind as much as as much as Ada is I think her name is Ada <laughs> whenever I listen to audiobooks I'm like what are those characters names again I'm obsessed with him just constantly questioning and being like why am I so obsessed with her Bestie, you're in love with her and we are all here for it and I love to hear him talk about it he's like I just want to know what song she likes to listen to when she has a bad day I am 55% into Swift and Saddle at this point. I am absolutely loving this book. <laughs> I'm loving it so much. I wanted to do a little bit of a check-in because I'm about to lay in bed. And I think I have maybe an hour and 45 minutes left. An hour and 37 minutes left. So I think my goal is to read for another maybe like 45 minutes to an hour. That way I will definitely be able to finish this book on sprints tomorrow morning. I was just sitting at my desk getting everything all set up. A couple updates since my last check-in. I just continue to be astonished and awed by Wes. Like I love this man <laughs> absolutely so much with my whole entire heart and soul. I do think that Ada is a little, she's like a little bit iffy for me. I do like her character. I think that she's super sweet. I understand her perspective and where she's coming from. The thing that put me off from her a little bit is how loner mentality she's being and it's almost like she self-sabotages relationships in her life. Like she's mentioned multiple times that She's always been kind of a loner. She finds it difficult to connect with people. She always feels like the outsider looking in for certain situations and she's never had friends really. Like she says that she's never had any friends and I find that 
hard to believe. Like there's just, you bond, even if you don't have like a big group of friends, you have a friend at some point in your life. Like I found that to be a little bit of an odd character trait for her. And then she has this girls night with, with Emmy, Kim and Teddy, and they're all being so sweet to her. And she kind of just like blurts out some really weird and standoffish things. And you're just like, can you not it's almost like she's just overthinking the situations too much and she needs to just relax and have fun and realize that these girls just want to hang out with her and like get to know her that's where she lost me a little bit but overall i do still like her i love that she's an interior designer like that is just my dream career honestly i feel like that would be so much freaking fun to basically like play sims in everyone's houses or what's the one from animal crossing happy home designer or something like that like that would just be so much fun. I'm like reassessing my whole life now. Why didn't I become an interior designer? I just also realized that I never gave a synopsis of Swift and Saddled and I do apologize. So the synopsis for this book, the Rebel Blue Ranch series, it seems like, this is what it seems like for the first two books. We start by our female main characters like coming back to the town that they're in. It is a small town in, oh gosh, Wyoming? And they all tend to start with the opening scene at this bar called the Devil's Boot. I might be making all of this up in my head. Not making it up, but like getting all of the names like slightly wrong. <laughs> but I think the bar is called the Devil's Boot. This second book, we have Ada. She just got out of what sounded like a very toxic, controlling, dysfunctional marriage. And she also failed out of her interior design program. So overall, she's feeling just very low and beat down. Like she kind of feels like a failure in two very big aspects of her life. And she's coming to Rebel Blue Ranch because she gets a job. They're renovating this old house on the property. And this is like Wes's big project. He talks about it a little bit in the first book that he feels like he is always there supporting his family and his friends, but he's never actually done anything for himself. And so I feel like this project for him is really like showcasing what he can do. And I don't know, just kind of having like his own moment, which is so sweet. So they're renovating this old home. I think that Wes's intention is for it to become an inn on their property, like kind of like a little bed and breakfast cutie inn vibe. She comes to town the first night, she stops at the devil's boot, she's doing some work and just like getting some stuff done. Wes walks in, his puppy dog runs right to her, beeline to her, and she's like, oh my gosh, this dog is so cute. Looks up, sees this rough and ready cowboy with bright green eyes just staring at her, being such a hot and sexy man. He's like, I see you're busy, but if you'd like to have a drink, I will be at the bar. And she's like, oh my gosh, he's not just gonna force himself on me and just like sit down and he's gonna let me like finish working. What a king, we love him. She finishes her work. She's walking out the door. She's about to like leave the bar. She turns around, makes eye contact with him, swerves, goes down a hallway. He follows her, they make out. Hottest makeout session. Ever. He like has her up against the wall. Her arms are pinned above her head. They get interrupted. She's embarrassed. She runs out. Next day, she goes to her first day on the job, finds out that the person that she made out with at the bar, this hot cowboy that she was drooling over, is in fact her boss. She's embarrassed. Also attracted to him, very much so. And she's fighting those feelings. Wes her boss, her hot cowboy, immediately in love with her. And then the story goes from there. So <laughs> that is the synopsis. I apologize that I didn't give that prior to just diving into all my thoughts and feelings. Wonderful news, friends. We finished Swift and Saddled on Sprints this morning. If you were there, you already know this. I already wrote my review on Goodreads for it. I gave it four stars. I do also like, I do really enjoy Elsie Silver as well. I'm super excited to continue reading the Chestnut Springs series because I feel like they're going to continue to get better and better. But I just feel like Lila Sage, her cowboy men 
speak to my soul. Like she just gets it. And like Elsie does as well. Elsie's are also absolutely stunning. But I don't know if I had to like tier rank Elsie and Lila. I think that Lila would be a little bit higher. I'm just I'm so obsessed. I also just like really want to become an interior designer now. Like that sounds like a dream. Overall, Swift and Saddle changed my life. It changed my career aspirations. <laughs> and it was also stunningly, breathtakingly spicy. Like Lila Sage also just really kills the spice for me. The mirror scene, I can't, like I can't even process how good it was. First of all, them in a storm, downpour rain, see this little calf like run by this little baby cow he runs out to go get it takes it and puts it in his truck and then he is shirtless bottle feeding this baby cow after he makes it like this cute little dog bed with blankets and a heater and a heating pad he was like sweetheart can you go get the heating pad i was like can you just like treat me like this baby cow like that's just what i want in life is to be treated like a baby cow by west rider but anyways, we will stop exposing my deepest, darkest secrets. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog, friends. If you've made it this far, please leave the cowboy yeehaw smiley face emoji because that is my new personality. I also think that um, pretty soon we're going to have to go to Barnes & Noble and buy the rest of the Chestnut Spring series so that I can absolutely binge read them. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Toodles!